So guys, today we are opening up this letter I got from Twin River Casino, January 14th, 2020. What's up guys, quick little intro for you guys today. Something unexpected happened. Got a letter in the mail from Twin River. Very interesting stuff. So let's go ahead and open it up together and read it together because, well, it's, um, it's a fun one for sure. Twin River Casino, January 14th, Ethan Yao. On or about December 14th, 2019, you were involved in an incident while at Twin River, Lincoln, whatever. Due to your actions, you are ejected permanently from entering Twin River L Casino. Oh, Jesus. This letter will serve as official notification that should you return to either casino, any t there's two casinos? I didn't even know that. Anytime during this ejection period, the Rhode Island State Police, Lincoln Police, or Tiverton Police will be called and you may charge with criminal trespass. Signed by the security manager. So, <clears throat> shout out to Twin River. Um, this was when I was playing the 510, uh, 510 session there. So, a little bit of a lose-lose, maybe? Um, lost $2,000 that day playing 510. And now, I guess, I'm permanently banned from Twin River. And it looks like it is a lifetime ban from Twin River. Which, I mean, honestly, it's kind of funny. Because if you're from around the area, so people who are not from the area, Twin River is known for, notoriously known for just the worst poker room out there. Um, the action's really great, but it's not run well. Um, I don't even play at Twin River anyways, so it was really funny because no one said anything to me at all um, when I was recording and playing that day. Um, I Just no notice, no warning, nothing, just that letter. So looks like I won't be returning to Twin anymore, which is something I really am not complaining about, to be honest. I, I wasn't really planning on going anyways. This makes a pretty cool clickbait thumbnail and title for you guys to click on this video, so uh, leave a like. Also, if you didn't see my 510 video yet, um, I'll drop that in the description below. That would be really great if you could watch it because well, I got banned from a casino for it, so that's gonna be up there now But also puts into perspective with my experiences with MGM Springfield and Encore Which both have told me to take down um, videos with my table footage At least they didn't go right, right ahead and ban me because I actually really enjoy both of those properties and the people that work there So that's super nice twin um, not so much so uh, totally okay with this I won't be playing at twin um, no meetup games at twin Nothing at Twin. Don't really need to go there. Um, so shout out to the people at Encore, the management at Encore and MGM if you're watching this video. Um, thank you guys for being a little bit nicer about this because I actually enjoy playing at your poker rooms. So that's that for this intro of the video. You can see I have, I, it's, it's a very ghetto schedule of um, what I'm going to be posting. So uh, that's, that's kind of what that is. But we'll go back to the normal video right now. Just wanted to make this announcement and yeah, that's it. Keep you guys updated on what's going on. Hopefully you enjoy this video. Hello, hello, what's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan, hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video on the channel. We are in traffic because we're right outside Encore. It is, uh, well, it's actually not bad. It's going right now, it was a lot worse before, but um, we're rolling, so we're getting there. It is a nice little Friday right now. I haven't actually played in a week. You guys don't know that because I upload three videos every single day, but I took the whole week off today. I uh, haven't played from Sunday to Thursday and, um, you know, had to take a break, had to uh, have a little mental reset, and we're back to playing tonight. Gonna see what happens. I am uh, on the 2-5 waiting list. It's a pretty long waiting list, actually, so we're gonna see if I actually hop into that game or if we're just gonna stick to 1-3. Regardless, it's a Friday night. We're in for some action, and we're gonna have a good time. So, uh, yeah, let's try to run it up. Wish me some good luck, and we will get into the hands now. All right, guys, first hand that we're going to go over, it is a little unorthodox to say the least, but let's go over it because we're in for a fun one. Under the Gun player raises and opens things up to $10. There are two callers to me in the small blind looking down at the good old 3-6 of hearts. Here, um, $8 more, $9 more, you know, let's go for it because why the hell not? I go ahead and call, and the big blind Taylor who watches the channel, shout out to you, ruins all the fun by three betting the action. He three bets to $50. The under gun player makes the call, the cutoff makes the call, the button makes the call, and here we are with three six, forced to call this pot here. We're going five ways, $250 in the middle with three six of hearts. Flop comes, king, seven, eight, two carts out there. We flop, backdoor straight draw, and the flush draw. First to act here, pot has ballooned up to $250. I've got 250 in my stack, so we're gonna do the open shove for the pot. 
Um, I jam the pot size bet of $250 basically, and it gets through. Wow. It folds all the way around. No one calls. I show because it's a good table and we're early on in the session. So um, yeah, live at the table. We're rolling. Let's try to get this thing started. Two hours into the session, a whole lot of folding goes by, even after showing our 6-3 of hearts hand. Next hand we get into, we have pocket jacks in the small blind with about 475 in our stack. There are two limpers to the button player who raises things up to $15. He has been shown to be a little splashy at this point. More splashy than me, actually. But um, here, in early position, out of position, I go ahead and 3-bet to $45. One of the early position player jams or calls for all in for less. Um, early position player limper calls for $38 total, folds to the button, and he makes the call for $45. So we're off to a flop three ways, one all in. Flop comes eight, nine, three, two clubs out there. Uh, pretty good flop as we flop an overpair. So I go ahead and bet $55, trying to get some value from any of his overcard holdings or whatever. Just a pretty small bet. He thinks about it and folds. And the board goes, we're off to a runout because the guy's all in. The board comes, run, runner, eights. So we end up boating up eights full of jacks and we take it down against ace 10. Only hand after that, we have ace 10 offsuit in the hijack. We are on our third table of night, by the way. We are three and a half hours in. It's been pretty dead, uh, for me at least. Not a, not a ton of action on my end, unfortunately. And we're three and a half hours into the session, ace 10 offsuit. We raise it up to $15 over an on the gun player who limps, and we get three callers on this table. So off to a flop four ways. Flop comes, ace, queen, four, rainbow. Pretty good flop for us. Action checks to me, going to bet for value. I bet $25, pretty small sizing. Only the big blind player makes the call. Off to a turn, turn comes a three, and he checks to me. Um, here, I don't think I can get three streets of value with a pretty vulnerable hand with just one pair here. So I'm just gonna check it back, try to get some value um, on the river here. The river comes a four, pairing the board, so so our 10 kicker doesn't even play anymore, and really just expecting to be chopping with basically every ace now. He actually ends up betting $60 here, just a snap call, not really gonna do much, not really folding. Um, not raising, just calling here, and expecting to chop a lot of the time. He uh, mocks his hands once I call, so we take it down without having to show. Looks like my check on the turn was good to uh, induce a bluff there and get some more money my way. Last hand that we'll go over, pretty short, I know. It's ace-jack offsuit, under the gun plus one. An under the gun player who is fairly new to the game, he says it's his first time playing live ever. He goes ahead and open limps. Actions onto me, going to raise it up to $16 in this spot. Hopefully we can just get a heads up against the on the gun player. But two players make the call in position of me and the on the gun player folds. So um, that did not go according to plan. We are off to a flop three ways out of position. Flop comes seven, seven, four, two spades out there. With the ace of spades, we do have a backdoor, not flush draw, but I'm not going to betting here multi-way. Just going to check, try to see a turn. Checks to the cutoff player who bets $25. Here, two overs, backdoor flush draw. Let's just peel one, see what happens and evaluate. I call 25 and middle position player calls $25 as well. So three ways to a turn. Turn comes the eight of diamonds. That doesn't really do anything for us. So it checks back to the cutoff player who throws out a bet of $95. Given what I've seen from this player so far, I haven't seen him bet large sizings for value. Um, I've seen him min-raise bets when he had a boat or when he had a set. So um, I just don't know what's going on here, but obviously we are not going to be bluff catching with ace jack of clubs. Um, that just seems really, really dumb. So we're gonna fold, the middle option player folds, and this hand was super boring and nothing happened, but it was that session was this boring that I had to throw this one in there because I had nothing to talk about. Yo, we are out of Encore. Um, cashing out the session, played for about five hours. This was the most boring video I've ever created to date. I think this video is like worse in terms of entertainment quality or anything, um, but I think it'll be super easy to make since I only went over four hands. So I guess in that regards, um, great video for me, but horrible video for you guys. Just didn't, just like nothing happened. I didn't pick up hands, didn't play any hands, and for the most part, just kind of sat there and folded for a long time. And now I'm trying to find my car that 
I'm having issues with, but I'm gonna keep on walking. Anyways, um, yeah, not a whole lot happened. Didn't pick up cards, and we, oh, she cannot fucking run. What up? Do I need help? I want your video. Oh, you wanna be on it? <laughs> What's your name, man? Louis. Louis? Monique. What's up, bro? Like What's going on? Here, my boy. What's going on, bro? Here, my boy with Malik. Stopping me mid outro here. So, um, going back to the session, I was in the game for $320. Only a $20 add on. Still over $300, but um, whatever. In for $320, out for some insignificant amount, like $530. Was it 430? 430. So I was I so I made like 115 bucks today. That's it. Five hours. Not a whole lot to report, unfortunately. Sometimes this is gonna happen. I've had a really good streak of having very volatile sessions, so I had a lot to talk about. This time, this wasn't one of them. Um but the biggest hand that I played was that 3-6 suited hand. Uh really mixing it up. That was early on in the session, but after that, like I literally couldn't play a single hand, didn't get a single playable hand. But that's gonna happen. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed the video. The, the people I met today, once again, super nice meeting all of you guys. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.